It is fascinating. Uh, I appreciate not everybody is as obsessed with the ebb and flow of politics as I am. But I, my job, of course, is to make you interested in, in where we are, even if you're not at the minute. And, and I shall do my best to do that. A, a couple of things picking up from where we left off yesterday. Uh, even the Daily Mail today is, is, is asking who paid for this poll in the Daily Telegraph. <laughs> we talk about a circular firing squad. Somebody whose identity you are not allowed to know commissioned polling to the tune of about £70,000 uh, it's someone who is allied with David Frost, arguably the most ridiculous figure to uh, strut upon the stage of politics in the last 10 years. And there's a lot of competition for that position. Remember, Liz Truss became prime minister. But David Frost, for my money, is right up there as one of the most truly ridiculous individuals to uh, engage in political, in politics in the last 10 years. Somebody who is in cahoots with him paid £70,000 to commission polling, carefully calibrated, to scare the Tories into lurching further to the right. Yesterday, I think we wasted 10 minutes wondering what that meant. It, it only refers to immigration. It only refers to immigration. And the, the thing that I find extraordinary is the failure of any of these people to realise that in political terms, that is a bottomless pit. A lot of people talk about the Faragification of the Tory party. Some of us have written about it at great length in a best-selling book, still available in all good bookshops. But, um, but what they don't understand is that Farage is not a politician in any conventional sense. A bit like Trump, I suppose, in a way. They're hecklers. Uh, the, the problem is, of course, that when a heckler gets onto the stage, they, who are they supposed to throw their rotten tomatoes at? So immigration is a bottomless pit. Imagine for a moment, and I mean this, imagine that the last of the so-called small boats had already sailed. OK? Imagine that that perceived problem was now over. It is, it is finished. Rishi Sunak can go on the television for the next six months and state, with no fear of being contradicted, he can state that he has stopped the boats. Right? I don't think that would make the blindest bit of difference to the political calculus of the next general election. I could be wrong. I I'm tempted to ask you whether you do, but that might be a bit too nebulous and theoretical for a phone-in. Let's stick it up there, seven minutes after ten. If, if he actually stopped the boats today, would that make the blindest bit of difference to the next general election? 0345 6060 973. And the reason why I don't think it would is not an opinion. It's actually counting. Can you remember what the numbers are? So net migration at the moment into this country last year was 745,000. Now, some people are supremely untroubled by that. Some people care about literally nothing else. Most people sit somewhere between the two positions. Obviously, if 10 million people or 5 million people a year were coming here and there were no jobs or houses for them, then we'd have a huge problem. Some people think that the figure of 745,000 already fits that category. And some people don't want any foreigners ever to come here ever again. Uh, and they currently, of course, enjoy rather more prominence in the Parliamentary Conservative Party than they have done since Enoch Powell was chucked out of the cabinet. So... 745,000 people made their way to this country last year. How many people do you think came by small boats? 29,090. So, unless there is something rather huge that I am missing here, if the problem that you have is with the scale of immigration, then... Even if the last small boat has sailed, you've still got a 745,000 person strong problem. Now, if you want to play the card of claiming the, or, or pointing out the distinction, the supposed distinction between legal and illegal, then you find yourself in very tricky territory. Because of those 29,090 people coming here in small boats, proportionately, they are going to be considerably more likely to have bona fide uh, uh, claims for asylum 
than pretty much any other cohort of people making their way here. So uh, you can say that they are illegal in the sense that their mode of transport is illegal, but you can't call a human being illegal. There's no such thing as an illegal human being, which is why we have an asylum system. So you're trying to stop. What they're trying to do is stop genuine refugees and asylum seekers from making their way to this country by essentially pretending that there is no such thing, that they're all bogus. Now, the logic behind that is grim, isn't it? Because they must believe it themselves. This is where, again, I feel the sort of ghost of Donald Trump sitting on my shoulder. I don't know what Donald Trump believes. I don't think he is uh, allied with the views that he sells to his followers. But I think this generation of Tories are. I think that your 30p Lees and your Miriam Cateses and these so-called all these five families, I, I honestly think that they have... Something got let out of the bottle, didn't it, in, 19, in 2016? Some, do you remember the morning after the referendum result when the Sun ran stories about, now we won't have to put up with any more Polish shops? And then they backtracked furiously. They'd spent months, if not years, leading up to that referendum vote, claiming it had nothing to do with racism and that Britain was a wonderful, diverse country where everyone was proud to live in, but you have to have limits or you have to have caps or you have to have control. Um, the extraordinary outpouring of hatred that followed, both on a public level and a private and personal level, was absolutely chilling. The calls we took from people telling us that their own mother-in-laws had voted to send all the immigrants home, and you'd say, well, like that, I'm one of them. And they'd say, do you remember, all together now, oh, I don't mean you. And I used to think that this was confined to a grisly rump of the electorate. But actually, the Tory party must have been full of this all along. The Tory party, particularly post-2019, but even post-2016 and pre-2016, the Tory party must have been full of people that looked at Farage and felt envy, that looked at Farage and said, God, I wish I could tell those lies about people speaking foreign languages. I wish I could pretend to be discomforted by people speaking foreign languages on trains when my own children speak a foreign language to my own wife when I go home. I wish I could pretend not to understand what the statistics about children who have English as a second language in schools actually mean. Well, they must have been watching it thinking, I wish I could tell xenophobic lies, but I can't. In David Cameron's Conservative Party, you, you couldn't tell xenophobic lies. In Theresa May's, you kind of could. I know she's engaged in a, in a sort of rehabilitation at the moment, and of the last four, she's by far the least awful. Last four or five, hang on. Cameron May. I get, do you get comfy camera May Johnson Trust Sunak? So May Johnson Trust Sunak. Yeah, of the last four, I won't include Cameron in that at the moment. She's by far the most awful. Um, the least awful. I I think stop the boats means stop the foreigners. Okay, and that is why I think seven hundred and forty five thousand versus twenty nine thousand and ninety means that this Political calculation makes no sense to me. It makes no sense to me. If you're appealing to a constituency of people that don't like immigration, then how will pledging to deal with, and probably failing, 29,090 out of almost a million people, how will that make any difference at all? So if Rishi Sunak... Uh, 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 somehow arrives at a place where he can stand up every day for the next God knows how many months and say, I stopped the boats. What difference is that going to make? And if I'm right, and it's not going to make any difference at all, then what are they playing at? 03456060973. You've got 60 MPs today, including the deputy chairman, although there's about 50 of them, so the title doesn't carry the cachet it once did. Um, threatening to vote against the government's bill or not to support the government's bill because they don't think it's nasty enough. They don't think that, you know, they don't think that international law is important. They seem to be ignoring two things. If they want to withdraw from the European Convention on Human Rights, then they are ignoring the damage that does immediately to the Good Friday Agreement. They're ignoring the fact that we're automatically out of the European Council, which is uh, quite a significant step, given that it would put us on the same uh, ethical and, and uh, foreign policy footing as Russia and Belarus. We are ignoring completely the fact that the Rwandan government have said, if you pull out of that convention, then 
we won't take anybody from your country. And everybody's ignoring the fact that since this so-called deal was signed with the Rwandan government, six asylum seekers from Rwanda have had their applications accepted in the United Kingdom. So I, I assemble all of that evidence. Those are all facts. Everything I've just said to you is a fact, not an opinion. The numbers are facts. The asylum seekers coming here from Rwanda are facts. The uh, uh, Good Friday agreements, absolute reliance upon the European Convention on Human Rights is a fact. The Rwandan government expressed insistence. Of course, they might change their mind, but their expressed insistence on not taking anybody from this country if we withdraw from the European Convention of Human Rights is, is a fact. All of these things are facts. And yet Rishi Sunak's Conservative Party is embarked upon a, a, a sort of fantasy island. Hinging, hinging, and this is the bit I really don't get, hinging upon the idea that making everybody cross and frightened about immigration creates an atmosphere in which stopping the boats becomes an electoral jackpot. What are they doing? Are they just hoping that nobody will point out that 745,000, if you've been primed to hate foreigners, if you've been primed to be spooked by immigration, 745,000 uh, coming via legal route is much more significant than 29,090 coming via hazardous routes. So what, what genuinely, what are they playing at? I genuinely don't know. I must stop, I genuinely must stop saying the word genuinely. Genuinely. Because it, 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 the more I look at it, the less sense it makes. And, and there's some good commentary in the Times today. Thank goodness. As I mentioned, there are still some decent writers, some very decent writers on that paper. Not, not, not least um, Hugo Rifkin, who, who makes the, the, the point about the numbers. Keen readers, he writes, may notice that one of those numbers is quite a lot bigger than the other one. As in the 745,000 versus 29,090. And then you have Daniel Finkelstein, a former speechwriter for David Cameron, um, put in the House of Lords, I think, as a, as a consequence of his service. And, and he actually writes under the headline that could be something from our show. The real problem for the party is a flight from reality, that detachment from reality in 2016, which, um, which seems to me to be the, the perfect launch pad from which to ask this question, what are they actually playing at? So in conclusion, I promise, the, 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 this weird poll in the Telegraph, which is big, it, it asked more people than usual questions and then used quite clever mechanics to extrapolate it into constituencies. There's a couple of flaws in it, uh, beyond the fact that no one knows who paid for it, but the it ignores the, the fact that every single vote going to that party that Farage and his friends run, it's not a party, is it? It's a business masquerading as a political party. I think, I think the leader gets appointed by the board. Um, <laughs> democracy in action, isn't it? And, and, and that, there's a misconception and I think a deliberate mislead that all the people leaning towards those people, that towards that party are disaffected Tory voters. They're clearly not. But the poll has been commissioned in order to push the Tory party to the right. And it's not complicated. That doesn't mean fiscally or economically or ideologically. It just means on immigration. We've got to be even tougher on immigration. And yet they have been tougher rhetorically on immigration than any government I can remember. And they are among the least popular in the polls. So what are they playing at? 0345 6060 973. And how have we arrived in a place where almost the entire political focus of the governing party can be on a deeply flawed and profoundly unpleasant policy that even if it worked would not touch the sides of the problem it claims to address? I don't get it. 0345 6060 973 is the number you need. So come in on that from any angle you want. The thing that intrigues me the most... Is whether, is whether or not there are any votes up for grabs in return for so-called stopping the boats. I, I, I can't see it myself. 
And they're just throwing more and more energy into this bottomless pit. Because if they stop the boats, Farage would be out tomorrow talking about people speaking foreign on trains again. Or he'd be talking about wage compression or how immigrants are stealing our jobs. He's not a proper honest politician. Well, this honest politician is a bit of an oxymoron. But he's not a proper contributor to public discourse. He doesn't identify genuine problems that need solutions. He identifies points of division that can serve his own purposes of self-promotion. And yet here we are. Our entire political landscape, it seems today, dedicated to a ludicrous policy designed to address a problem that is, in the great scheme of things, if you're going to compare 29,000 to 745,000, that problem's negligible.